The Flash is a popular show currently running on the CW with Grant Gustin starring as the role of Barry Allen aka The Flash and John Wesley Shipp as his father Henry Allen. It is well known that actor John Wesley Shipp previously played Barry Allen aka The Flash in another TV show which lasted one season of 1990 through 1991. And today, I'm going to go over a few highlights of that 1990 show. So this video is aimed towards fans of the current show who enjoy making connections between the shows and trivia about The Flash and the DC television universe. The first episode starts off with Barry Allen as an adult before getting any powers. Unlike the current show, both Barry's parents live to see Barry become an adult. Barry's mother Nora does not get murdered when Barry is a child or ever in the show, and Barry's father Henry never goes to prison. It also adds to the story that Barry has an older brother, which he never had in the comics, named Jay Allen. This character Jay Allen grew up as a high school track race champion and now works as a cop for the Central City Police Department. The name Jay was undoubtedly a nod to the comic character Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Flash. Barry works as a forensic scientist for the Central City Police Department, along with his business partner Julio Mendez, played by an actor named Alex Desert, who is one of only three every episode regulars the series had. I'm surprised the producers of the current show have not asked Alex Desert to appear as a guest. I still hope someday they do. Anyway, the first episode shows Barry getting struck by lightning while working in the crime labs one night. The lightning strike is completely random, it is not controlled by anyone here. After getting struck, he goes into a coma for just a few hours, but then he's perfectly fine the next day. The story that Barry was in a coma for nine months is not seen here. But the doctor sees a few signs of minor cell damage that he can't recognize, so he sends Barry to Star Labs for further examinations. There's another little tiny nod to the comics when you learn that Star Labs is located at 50 Garrick Avenue, as in Jay Garrick. In this version, Star Labs is just one sole worker, a woman named Dr. Tina McGee, who is based on a comic book character of the same name. But in the comics, Tina worked more with Wally West. In this show, Tina mentions that her husband David used to work for Star Labs, but died on the job a year earlier. Note that in the comics, Tina did have a husband, but his name was Jerry and he never died. Also note that Tina McGee is played by actress Amanda Pays, who has also appeared on the current show as the same character. Though on the current show, Tina does not work for Star Labs, but a different organization called Mercury Labs. Anyway, back to the 1990 show. Tina runs early tests on Barry and recognizes that he has speed abilities. So she puts him to further tests by taking him to a race facility. Tina has Barry wear what she describes as That's a Soviet prototype deep sea suit. And is immediately obvious that more will later be added to become the full flash suit. As soon as Barry starts running at this racetrack, we see his full speed capability. This pilot also shows Barry in a relationship with comic book character Iris West. Here Iris works as an artist and we do not see any of Iris' family. Barry and Iris break up in the first episode and it seems like the door is open that they could potentially get back together at some point, but then we never see Iris again the rest of the season. Many fans speculate that if there was a second season then we would have seen Iris return, but that's never confirmed. Anyway, the villain of this pilot is an original character named Nicholas Pike. His basic story is that he was once a cop, partnered with Barry's brother Jay Allen, but did a legal business on the side. When Jay figured out what Pike was up to, he had him arrested. And Pike eventually escaped from prison and started a secret gang of criminals known as the Dark Riders. In this pilot episode, spoiler alert, Pike murders Jay Allen. Barry is devastated by the loss of his brother, and that is what motivates him to use his powers and become a superhero and stop Pike and the Dark Riders. Barry asks Tina for a little help adding more to his suit. I want you to build a hood to cover my face so no one will know who I am, and gloves so I won't leave fingerprints. Can you do that? And Barry thinks of the Flash symbol. The rest of the pilot is pretty predictable, but well done and entertaining. Barry becomes the Flash, captures Pike, shuts down the Dark Riders. At the end, Barry decides he will not stop there, but continue to use his powers to fight crime as the Flash, with the help of his new friend Tina McGee at Star Labs, the only person who knows his secret. I didn't find any of the later episodes to be nearly as entertaining as the first, but there are some moments worth mentioning. However, I should first explain that if you want to follow the episodes online by their numbers, there's a real inconsistency online. Some people count the pilot episode as episode 1, others count the pilot as episode 1 and 2 because it was a 2 hour special, and some people count the pilot as a made for TV movie and call the next episode episode 1. This of course affects how you count every episode the rest of the season. 
Here in this video, I'm going to count the whole pilot as episode 1, and the following episode, which is called Out of Control, episode 2, and so on. In episode 3, titled Watching the Detectives, Tina briefly mentions Okay, Sherry, there's a couple of things. If Dr. Carter Hall calls, can you tell Comic fans will recognize that name as the secret identity of popular superhero Hawkman. We just never see any images of him here, nor do we even hear his voice. We just hear Tina say his name once. You might want to take note that in the comics, Hawkman once worked alongside Jay Garrick in a group called the Justice Society of America. And Hawkman is also part of the current show, Legends of Tomorrow, which is set in the same universe as the current Flash show. Episode number 12, titled The Trickster, introduces the comic villain of the same name. Uh, he's played by Mark Hamill, aka Luke Skywalker. Hamill would many years later play the same character again on the current show. Note that the current show included some still photos of when the trickster was arrested 20 years earlier and actually used still images from this 1990s show. This episode includes one scene in which the trickster paints a statue of Mercury red, making it look a lot like, and obviously intended to look like, Jay Garrick Flash. Uh, this episode also includes a scene at a costume party when one person in the background can be seen dressed as Superman. Episode number 15, titled Fast Forward, has a missile hit Barry while he is running, and the combined speed sends him 10 years into the future. This was the only time traveling scene on the show. You might also want to take note that this was the only episode after the pilot in which character Pike made a return appearance. Episode 17, titled Captain Cold, obviously introduced popular comic villain of the same name. Episode number 18, titled Twin Streaks, introduced an original character named Pollux, who is a clone of Barry with the powers included. He wears the same suit as the Flash, only colored blue instead of red. The scientists who create Pollux convince him to try to kill the Flash, so the two obviously fight. The creation of this character was loosely inspired by the character of the Reverse Flash, aka Professor Zoom, but they are clearly not the same character. Episode 19, titled Done With Mirrors, introduced popular comic villain Mirror Master. I don't know how accurate this portrayal of Mirror Master was compared to his comic book counterpart, but it was supposed to be the same character. Episode 22, season and series finale titled Trial of the Trickster, brings back Mark Hamill as the Trickster. This is the final episode of the series and it does not end with any kind of cliffhanger. Honestly, when I saw this episode when it first aired, I didn't even realize it was the season finale. I expected to see a new episode the following week. After that season and series finale, there was one Flash comic book released in continuity with the show. The cover made it seem like it was the first of an ongoing series, but there was never a second issue released. The book featured two separate stories and then articles and interviews with cast and crew and an episode guide of the first season. In this comic's first story, Barry was drawn with blonde hair, looking more like the Barry of the comics than John Wesley Shipp, despite being in continuity with the show. But in this comic's second story, Barry was clearly drawn to look like John Wesley Shipp. I have no idea what the reasons behind that were. At the end of the comic, after the episode guide, it ends with the words, And so ends the first season. Dot dot dot. Which implies everyone expected there would be a second season, but it didn't happen. If you look at the 1990s show back to back with this current show, comparison shows that there's no comparison. The current show is not only superior in terms of action and special effects, but also in writing, in characters, and story. Nevertheless, the current show uses many ideas from the 1990s show, and even many of the actors. This means that the current show would not be what it is had that 1990s show never existed. So for that, I think all fans should appreciate and remember the existence of this 1990 show.